No messing about, tip number one, creating output presets. So here we are on the deliver page of DaVinci Resolve. I'm just gonna come up here and select a preset, one of these, I'm gonna go with H.265 Master. Then all we need to do is change the format, codec, encoder, resolution, frame rate, quality, all of those things to what you would usually use. Then click the three little dots up here, and we're gonna save as a new preset. Give it a name, I'm gonna go with 265 NVIDIA, and then click on OK. Now, whenever you open up the deliver page, Scroll over to the far left up here and you'll see your 265 NVIDIA or whatever preset you've created. Give it a click and it will automatically load in all the settings here for you. Give this three little dots a click once again and there's a few new options. You can delete that current preset. If you make any changes, so let's say I want this as native instead, I can give the three little dots a click and I can update the current preset or I could save it as a new preset. Super quick trick that just stops you having to amend all those settings every single time. Right, tip number two, quick exports. Same place on the deliver page. This time, give that three little dots a click, and now you'll see these quick exports at the bottom. And then we'll see our created preset just there, 265 NVIDIA. Give it a click to make sure it's ticked. So as you can see, I now have a tick. If I jump back over to the cut page, top right hand corner, I've got quick export. If I give that a click, I've got all of these presets here. The one on the far right, I've got my presets so then I can export the video without actually first having to go onto the deliver page. What about the edit page, I hear you ask? Well, if you're on the edit page, there's no button at the top right. Instead, what you need to do, click on file and then come down to quick export. If you wanna be really fancy, you can assign quick export to a keyboard shortcut instead. Simply click on DaVinci Resolve top left, keyboard customization. Search for quick in this little quick search here and you'll see quick export. In this little box, give that a click and then enter your keyboard shortcut. The one I found that works well, Control, Alt and E, and then simply hit save. I can close this down and at any point now I can hit Control, Alt, E to get the quick export up. I can choose the preset and off we go. Easy peasy. Tip number three, changing timelines on the deliver page. This project here needed two versions, one for YouTube and one for Instagram. So I've got two timelines. Rather than having to hop back onto the edit page, there's a drop down up here and I can choose between the timelines within my current project. So I've got the main tutorial and then I've got the Instagram version. So what I can do with my Instagram timeline selected, I can choose all my formats and then add to the render queue. I can then simply swap back to my main tutorial, which is for YouTube, so it's a different format. Make sure everything is correct within here add that to the render queue, and then they're both ready to go. Simple. Tip number three, no, tip number four, show job details. So I've got my render queue here with my two jobs. Now I was sensible, I named my timelines accordingly, but if I didn't, I wouldn't know which one was which. Click on this little three dots up in the top right hand corner, and then tick show job details. That just gives you slightly more information about each of the jobs within your render queue. So I can see this one's 1080 by 1350, this one's 4096 by 2160, this is my YouTube one, this is my one for Instagram. But before we do render, tip number five, updates during renders. Just above your preview window here, there's this little three dots, give that a click, and then there's updates during renders. If it's on, as it's rendering, it will be playing the video through like so. If we turn it off, it will just stay static. I generally leave mine off because I don't need to see the preview, I've just edited the video. And if you're on older or slower hardware, it can actually help to speed up your render times. So turn those previews off and you'll be good to go. Button them back, just turn them back on again, easy. If I want to render them individually, I can just give the one a click and then render one and it's good to go. Alternatively, I can click and drag to highlight them all, or I can just make sure that none of them are selected. Render will now say render all, and can render them all out in one go. Ba 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 ran. Ba 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 So once you've hit that render button and it's rendered, and you've also hit that like and subscribe button, wink, you can find that file really quickly using my tip number six, open file location. So this one has been done, as you can see it's been completed. If we then right click, we can open file location and straight away I'll open the folder that contains our rendered video and it just saves us having to go searching for it. What about rendering files from multiple different projects? Well, that's my tip number seven. So this is a different project. I'm gonna use my newly created preset. I'm gonna add to the render queue, but I've only got this one job. All I need to do, click on these little three dots at the top and I want to show all project. Any of the projects that we've rendered before or that are currently waiting to be rendered will appear within our render queue. So then we can render them all in one big go. As you can see at the top, I've already got one which has been rendered. 
If I want to get rid of those, again, the three little dots, I can clear all rendered jobs, and it's just going to show me those that are waiting to be rendered. Make sure none of them are highlighted, click render all, and all three, or however many you've got, will be rendered in one big go. Now, tip number eight, marking in and out points so that you can render different sections of a project really quickly and easily. So with this project here, let's say that I only want to render the first 30 seconds of it. Using my keyboard, I'm gonna put my playhead at the 30 second mark, hit the O key to mark an in and out point, and then it's just this section here which will be rendered. I then add to the render queue, and then I can render this section off. As you can see, the time here is just 30 seconds. If I want to get that back, so I'm rendering the entire timeline, I can either just use this little drop down and go to the entire timeline, or let me just mark it again, I can use the keyboard shortcut, Alt and X. Now another bonus little tip, above my preview window, up to the left, I've got clips. If I give that a click, I'll see all of the individual clips within the timeline appear here. If there's just one particular clip I wish to render, if I just right click on it, I can render this clip. It will automatically mark that as the in and out, so then I can add to the render queue. As you can see, it's just 13 seconds because it's just that clip, and then that will be rendered out on its own. Awesome way of picking and choosing the different points that you want to render out, rendering different things in one big go. Easy. Right, tip number nine, rendering out just video or just audio on their own. So once I've got my preset selected, under here we've got video, audio and file, these three little tabs. On video and audio, you'll notice there's a tick box. So if I didn't want the audio, I could just go to audio, export audio, untick that, and then when we render, we're just gonna be rendering the video on its own. Alternatively, if we untick export video, we just export audio, we then get a few different file formats because obviously it's an audio file rather than a video, so we can export it as a WAV file with some different codecs. Now as a super quick bonus tip, just above your video, audio and file, you've got render, single clip and individual clips. If we change single clip to individual, when we render this out, rather than having one video file, we're gonna have six individual video files because I've got six clips on my timeline. If we go to the file tab, you can choose how they're gonna be named, you can put them into subfolders, you can do all sorts of fun stuff. Once you've selected that, I hit add to render queue, and as you can see, I'm gonna be rendering six clips. So then I just hit render all, all six will be generated and job done. That was just a quick bonus one for you. Right, my last one, tip number 10, create additional video output. This one's a good one. Sticking with this same project, I'm using my 265 NVIDIA preset. Now this is an MP4 that's 265, the codec. Let's say that I want to create an H.264 file at the same time. I can do that using an additional video output. So just above all of this, once again, our three little dots, give that a click and then select create additional video output. Then you'll notice you've got a number one and a number two tab here. So our number one is gonna be MP4 265 NVIDIA. I'm gonna go on number two. This one's gonna be MP4264. I'll use NVIDIA once again. You need to make sure that you put something in the file subfolder because you need to have a subfolder created for this new file. So I'm just gonna call it 264. And then I'm gonna to add to the render queue. A single render will be added to the render queue, which I can then hit render all. Now, while there's only one render in the queue, this is actually gonna create two separate files for us. One that's H.264 and one that's H.265. So now if I use my other tip of right click and open file location, you can see I've got my untitled here. This is my 265. And then I've got a folder called 264. And if I open that, I've got my other video file. This is my 264. Real quick way of creating different codecs with only rendering one single project. Boo -boo 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 -boo.